Two full years had passed and Daniel was revisited once again. A new vision appeared to him subsequent to the one which appeared to him previously. You and I will be joining him today in part 3 out of 6 short video sessions to see this new revelation unfold before his eyes. A vision that was true and one of great conflict. Somebody says, how many of these do you have to go through? Well, hang on, it's not the end of the story. The key to uncode two more mysteries was handed to Daniel and I promise you don't want to miss it. In a few short minutes you'll find out who the second and the third kingdoms were in this grand plan of mankind's history. Without further ado, let's dive in and see what this ancient manuscript has to say. Then I lifted my eyes and looked and behold a ram which had two horns was standing in front of the canal. Now the two horns were long but one was longer than the other with the longer one coming up last. I saw the ram butting westward, northward and southward and no other beast could stand before him nor was there anyone to rescue from his power but he did as he pleased and magnified himself. While I was observing, behold, a male goat was coming from the west over the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground. This was a fast goat and the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. He came up to the ram and had, that had two horns which I had seen standing in front of the canal and rushed at him in his mighty wrath. I saw him come beside the ram and he was enraged at him and he struck the ram and shattered his two horns and the ram had no strength to withstand him. So he hurled him to the ground and trampled on him and there was none to rescue the ram from his power. Then the male goat magnified himself exceedingly but as soon as he was mighty the large horn was broken and in its place there came up four conspicuous horns toward the four winds of heaven. A vision of a ram and a goat. What's up with them? It appears that we keep adding more and more beasts and other weird creatures to this list. I know it's crazy. Don't lose focus here. It will come all clear to you in a few minutes. The goat, the goat prevailed over the ram and trampled him down. But there is a fine detail that I don't want you to miss. This description right here will give you a sneak peek into what the Antichrist is going to look like. Pay close attention and let's keep reading. Out of, the one, out of one of them came forth a rather small horn which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east and toward the beautiful land. It grew up to the host of heaven and caused some of the hosts and some of the stars to fall to, the, to earth and it trampled them down. It even magnified itself to be equal with the commander of the host and it removed the regular sacrifice from him and the place of his sanctuary was thrown down. And on account of transgression, the host will be given over to the horn along with the regular sacrifice and it will fling truth to the ground and perform its will and prosper. A small horn which grew exceedingly great. Didn't we read about it before? But wait, we've got to be very careful here. Let's not jump to a conclusion beforehand. We need to see the completion of this vision and understand its message. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it, and behold, standing before me was one who looked like a man. And I heard the voice of a man between the banks of Ulai, and he called out and said, Gabriel, give this man an understanding of the vision. He said, Behold, I am going to let you know what will occur at the final period of the indignation for it pertains to the appointed time of the end. The ram which you saw with the two horns represents the kings of Media and Persia. The shaggy goat represents the kingdom of Greece and the large horn that is between his eyes is the first king. How incredible is that? Don't you appreciate the fact that we don't have to speculate or second guess when we read this ancient writing? It tells us plain and clear exactly what we need to know. The ram with two horns represented the kings of Media and Persia. The male goat represented the kingdom of Greece. And the large conspicuous horn between his eyes was the first king. That's Alexander the Great. Can you believe that? 
Daniel had an insight on Alexander the Great's ascension to power long before he was even born. So by now we already know for a fact who the first, the second and the third kingdoms were. First was Babylon, the head of gold, the winged lion. Second was Medo-Persian Empire, the breast and the arm of silver, the bear and the ram. Third was the kingdom of Greece, the belly and thighs of bronze, the winged leopard and the goat. How did we come to this conclusion? Let's keep reading. The broken horn and the four horns that arose in its place represent four kingdoms which will arise from the, his nation, although not with his power. We know from history that Alexander the Great died young at age 33. His wife and his sons were murdered. His kingdom was later divided among his four generals, thus four horns on the male goat and four heads and four wings of a bird on the leopard. Let's go back to the text. In the latter period of their rule, this is key here to understand this message, the rule of the four generals which will arise from this nation, that is Greece. When the transgressors have run their course, a king will arise, insolent and skilled in intrigue. His power will be mighty, but not by his own power. And he will destroy to an extraordinary degree and perform, uh, prosper and perform his will. He will destroy mighty man and the holy people. And through his shrewdness, he will cause deceit to succeed by his influence. And he will magnify himself in, in his heart. And he will destroy many while they are at ease. He will even oppose the prince of princes, but he will be broken without human agency. And lastly, Gabriel, the messenger from God, concluded this message by saying, The vision of the evenings and mornings which has been told is true, but keep the vision secret, for it pertains to many days in the future. Let's go back to the board here for a minute. Remember, Daniel served under the Babylonian kings up until now, which means that this revelation about the Medo-Persian Empire was still future for him, approximately 12 years before it actually came to pass. But for us, it's already in the past. Babylon is gone a long time ago. It was taken over by the Medes and the Persians. Then Alexander the Great came along. He became king at age 21, and in 11 short years, he conquered the entire known world. Remember the leopard? It's a fast cat. And the male goat, which was coming from the west over the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground? I mean, this goat was fast. This small horn we have just read about came out of four horns on the goat, which is the third kingdom, Greece. And his name was Antiochus IV Epiphanes, which translates God Manifest. He reigned between 175 BC to 163 BC. He cannot possibly be the same king we've read about in our previous part when reading from chapter 7 because that little horn came out of the ten horns on the head of the fourth dreadful and terrifying beast. It's true they are very much alike, but they are not one and the same. What we learn though is that this king, Antiochus Epiphanes of Greek descent, was a prototype of the Antichrist who is still to come. Looking at and studying what Antiochus Epiphanes did will give you a good insight into what the other king, who is still to come, will look like. It even magnified itself to be equal with the commander of the host, and it removed the regular sacrifice from him, and the place of his sanctuary was thrown down. What Antiochus Epiphanes did, like no other pagan king before him, he entered the Holy of Holies, the most sacred place of worship for the Jews, and offered a sow, a female pig, the most disgusted, unclean animal as far as Jews were concerned. He offered it as a sacrifice to his gods inside the most sacred place of worship, the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. It was an outrageous act of blasphemy against the Creator. His power will be mighty, but not by his own power, and he will destroy to an extraordinary degree and prosper and perform his will. He will destroy mighty man and the holy people, and through his shrewdness, 
he will cause deceit to succeed by his influence, and he will magnify himself in his heart, and he will destroy many while they are at ease. He will even oppose the prince of princes, but he will be broken without human agency. That, my friend, for you and me, is history. It's gone. But there is a king yet to come, a mighty king, the most influential political and military leader you've ever seen or heard about, skilled in intrigue, who will do as Antiochus Epiphanes did and even worse. Our quest in finding out who this man is and what he will do is not finished. To really understand this revelation and uncode this mystery, we must look at one more text. The most important revelation given to Daniel which concerns our time is yet to come. You don't want to miss it. You and I are just about to learn who the fourth kingdom is and where we stand on this canvas depicting all human history. This, my friend, is the blueprint for all the prophecies yet to come true. Don't quit.